Alrighty, so we're back and today's subject is back into our regularly scheduled programming of doing model rockets. There has been a ton of work that's gone into being able to actually fly again. I've had a lot of setbacks and a lot of other events in between that have just made me unable to get back into flying. So first and foremost, I completely rebuilt the rocket. Um, my Falcon 9 flew great last time, but guess what? I broke it somehow. I don't know exactly how, but I have a suspicion based on the voltage regulator on board the rocket. I believe that somehow I may have plugged in a battery that was a little higher than 12 volts and it completely fried the microcontroller on board. I had to do some rocket surgery, take everything apart and put in a whole new microcontroller, which was a gigantic pain. During that whole process, I actually learned a lot on how I'd like to move forward with future rockets and improve the assembly and disassembly procedures. Um, there's, a, there's a lot of difficulty in taking things apart and putting them back together over and over again, so making it as easy as possible is something I am trying to help future me with all the time. And I'm sure future me will look back at this and go, that was not the right call, you probably should have done this one instead, but we'll get to that when we get there. Between last flight and this flight, I've had a lot of adjustments. So our previous flight flew on an F10 motor, which burns for a long time, but doesn't have a lot of thrust, but it didn't have any legs on it, which I intend to fly with in the future. And it also had a little bit of a, uh, a terrible guidance system inside of it. The software I've written previously is just not great and there's no real getting around that. I've called it many times hot garbage. Software is never my forte. So I think personally, I've written some hot garbage that tends to work sometimes. But overall, I'm learning a lot each time and progressing, which is good. The previous flight went really well. It went up almost pin straight with almost no roll. And that was really good for maintaining the controller rocket. But it didn't have leg deployment and it is missing out on some of the software upgrades I've made. Uh, I've moved everything in the software into function, so it's way easier to come in and maintenance different sections because each part of the software is a part that's kind of installed into the software database that it runs. So each section calls back to another section in the code. It runs that unit basically, and then it goes back to the rest of the main program. So this rocket actually has five main events that are targeted in its launch process. It has a boost phase where it goes up. It has a apogee phase where it detects that it's burnt out its engine and it's gone as high as it's gonna go. And then it has a phase where it knows that it's going down and it deploys its drag fins at the top. So the fins actually orient it so that it falls basically like a rod from God straight down towards the ground. It is pretty nice, honestly, because it means there's no drift due to the parachute blowing it sideways. After fins comes parachute deployment and then legs. So if we're gonna propulsively land in the future, we would replace that parachute deployment step with a landing burn step. But it's really important nonetheless to try and trigger things on time at specific points. So for this rocket, we're triggering things at different altitudes. So each altitude is a key moment or a flight event, and it switches between flight modes. In my previous video, I kind of talked about how I did a whole rewrite of the software and I get way more in depth on this. One of the other big things I did on this booster was I cut a new HD camera mount into the rocket and it now has a onboard window. So it has a pretty large window that takes up about a quarter of the airframe on the lower section, right about here on the opposite side, of course. Um, that camera is a 1080p camera. It's okay, but it's pretty light. It's decased and it provides great footage out the side of the rocket when we're about to fly. I did a few finishing touches on this one too. I came up with a NASA worm decal, which is personally, in my opinion, the best spaceflight logo around there is. But the other thing that I 
really liked as a touch that I'm going to be continuing going forward is I made actually a mission patch for the flight and I was able to adhere that to the surface of the airframe and I'm going to try and keep doing that as we go forward where the airframe will receive more patches as missions go on so we can actually see which one's a veteran and what flights they've been on. And with everything ready to go, I headed out to the launch site and we were ready to fly. Break time. So you might be asking, um, Rob, you uh, you spent forever on that one. You uh, you did all the testing. It seemed to be going pretty good. You seemed pretty optimistic, and then it uh, just didn't fly. It just it just kind of fell over and exploded on the ground twice in the same day. Well, I'm glad you asked why it did those things, because I asked the same question, and both times I got the same answer, and that answer was the engine igniter did not even go off. So I took all this stuff out to the launch site, and the igniter just burnt but didn't ignite the rocket motor. And that's just something that's something that can happen. Um, these, these Estes igniters, are really cheap, they're very thin, and they're very fragile, so just pushing them into the motor kind of runs the risk of damaging them. There are more expensive ones, which I've since grabbed, but in trying to keep things cheap and simple, I, uh, I sacrificed just a little bit of the reliability there. So it's video editor Rob here. I didn't like my voiceover for this section, so to fix this whole problem, um, I'm just going to kind of do this off the cuff. The pyrotechnics inside the rocket didn't have enough inhibits to prevent them from going off, so I added a lot of those. Overall, I just made it so that the rocket can't initiate any of its charges below a certain altitude, but it also has to satisfy all these other conditions before it can do any of those two, and that is to prevent this from ever happening again in the future. So. So what I'm trying to say is those three safety interfaces all come together and they meet and they prevent that from happening ever again, because that sucks. So as a result, we can't change flight mode until we fly and we can't fly until we actually leave the ground and we can't do any of the other flight modes until we go high enough. So it's kind of, it's kind of good. And then sadly, between that launch and now, it rained, like, every day. For, like, three months. And that was a lot. Florida, am I right? Also in there, I had a lot going on with my life. I had a lot of work-related stuff. Here we are, though. Everything's set. I'm obviously making this video. And there's a image on the screen of the rocket in flight and a rocket right here. So obviously it flew. So let's just give the people what they want and we'll cut to the flight footage.
So that was pretty good. A little bit of, little bit of angle, but overall, Pretty good, it came back, it did all the leg things, did all the fin things, it deployed all on time, and honestly, I can't complain given the previous attempt. Overall though, I wouldn't call it quite a success because a lot of the software systems just didn't exactly work as intended. On takeoff, you can see the whole thing just kind of goes sideways, and that's because for some reason, the orientation system didn't zero out and we defined our vertical as 30 degrees off to the side. And apparently that just was the flavor of the day. So the thing just takes off, tries to find its true north basically and flies that way. It stays inside its abort cone though as a result and it runs through all of its flight procedures. The controller did a pretty good job at maintaining orientation on the way up, but it isn't exactly the clean takeoff we really want, and it's going to require a little bit of data review to figure out things. In the interim, I think I'm going to update to a better, more global orientation library that will better track the orientation of the rocket over time and prevent anything like this from happening again. It's something I've kind of not wanted to do. I've been trying to keep it as simple as possible, but a lot of the assumptions, like the rocket doesn't roll much at all, they don't really work, especially as you try to fly higher and you get into more and more unusual circumstances. For example, if that software had been in place on this flight, it would have most likely corrected back more towards the vertical. This rocket can't really do too much about the roll, but we're not really worried about that if we can figure out which way is up and maintain it. The flight made it to an altitude of about 34 meters, which is pretty good, pretty respectable given uh, the offset that it had, and it was able to maintain the control in a pretty off nominal state, so I'll give it a, a few props for that. The propeller testing and everything is a little bit underpowered compared to the motor I flew it on, so the tune of the rocket was a little below what we would have wanted to see, and hence we had some oscillations on takeoff. But overall, it ran through all of its flight procedures and it deployed its legs right before hitting the ground. Plus, I'm able to see when the different events happened on the flight and compare that with the altitude. And the altitude we are able to video and photograph of the rocket to see where our deployments happen and how much time we actually have between triggering those legs, hitting the ground, opening the fins and when they actually intended to open because there is a lag time between whenever we want to trigger something and that's just built into the real world. Nothing really broke on this one luckily except we did lose one of our legs but we're still standing strong on three right here which I have spares and they aren't totally necessary for flight so as long as there's something on there it should be just fine next time. Between now and next flight, we're going to be updating a lot of that orientation software, fixing some of the functions in the flight software to have delays so that we can tune when the event actually happens and make sure that we are accounting for the amount of time between triggering and the event occurring so we can bang on hit things and predict when we need to burn motors, parachutes, or open fins. So I, I didn't really have any more than that. Um, that's, uh, that's pretty much this last flight. And maybe, uh, maybe we'll go a little higher or something. Use some fins. That'd be cool. But yeah, thank you for watching. Um, if you like any of this, always uh, subscribe for more. And uh, Patreon is a great way to support this. I do basically most of my purchasing as of late via Patreon donations, and that's kind of what keeps my rocket program churning. Um, as of right now, I got at least four projects in development, and I try and find time every week to work on it and shoot off a detailed update to the patrons. So any support on there is appreciated. Otherwise, I just hope you enjoy this, and I like showing off the fun process of figuring this stuff out. So. See you next time.
Houston, you are go for TLI. Over.